It's day three and cloud cover has greeted the riders as we head on the reverse loop from the first two days. We have one new test, Cita di Orbia, which is where we are now and where the riders of the FIM International Six Days of Enduro will start their day. <laughs> The women's riders all bunch into the first test at the same time, all getting ready to go. And the fastest group of the day was the Australians once more. Jessica Gardner, the fastest of those, though she was 15 seconds down on the day's fastest woman. She got two stage wins, special tests coming to her and had a good overall day on her Sherco bike. The second of the Australians this time was Gemma Wilson. She took the special test victory and was much faster today. She's really starting to come to grips with things again. Taylor Jones had an eight minute penalty all for problems and not reaching the stages on time. So despite getting one stage win, that dropped her back and meant that she was the no score today for Australia. But all in all, the Australian women looking pretty strong at the top of the field. The only person able to hold a candle to them is Jessica Johnson, the fastest woman on the day. She took two stage wins, finally taking some away from the Australians as she helped move Sweden still into contention and further ahead of the chasing French girls. Behind them, it was Carlson, sixth on the day. She got a four minute penalty. And in fact, only the first three girls got through without any time penalties. We're down to just two Swedish women now as number 604, Sanna Bergman is out after having stomach problems early on after the first special test. So Sweden still in second position. Third on the day, and moving closer to overtaking the French for the final spot on the podium are the Canadians, Shelby Turner, fourth on the day. And that meant that she helped to pull her team higher up. Both of the girls from Canada had time penalties, four minutes added on to their total times. But look out for Lexi Ponchol riding a fantic of all things, the only one in the women's competition and coming home ninth out of the women. Let's hear from one of our fastest girls, Gemma Wilson from Australia. Oh uh, yeah, it was another really tough day. It was really dusty. Um, we're kind of stuck in the middle. We overtake the slower trophy riders and we get caught by the fa faster clubman riders. So there is no dust free run, which is a bit of a bummer. But I felt really good today. Day one, I was a bit slow because um, I fractured my back five weeks ago. So I had five weeks off the bike. So day one was like, learn to ride again. But yesterday I felt heaps better and today I felt better again. I screwed up the last test, but other than that, I had a pretty clean day. And I didn't lose any trial time. A lot of the girls did today. Um, Jess from Australia as well, she didn't. So we've had two girls that didn't lose any time. So hopefully we'll still be in front. So it's taken three days, but the time penalties have started to rack up. And it's nearly a nine minute gap for Australia over Sweden. France just clinging on to third place. On to the junior competition where the French are having a better time of it. Once again, Loic Glario was the first junior rider home, leaping over that jump there and riding like a man possessed. He shared all of the test wins with his fellow Frenchman number 19, Mathias Bellino, who is currently second overall in Enduro 3. But these two French riders are the ones that are pulling the French team ahead. Kevin Romer, number 17, finished a lowly 20th out of the juniors, which meant that he dragged the French time down a little bit. But such is the speed of the first two that they are keeping the pace very, very high and constantly pulling away from the chasing teams behind them. Good solid riding from all of the French teams and they'll be looking to hold on to this for the next three days. <laughs> Just behind them, we're going to look at the Italians, and it was Giacomo Redonde, third. He was one minute behind Larrier, 
the number 37, having a decent run out. And he was the fastest of the Italians ahead of Nicolo Moro, who was fifth in the juniors, and Gianluca Martini, who is the third enduro three rider. One minute and 13 behind these guys. It is going to be the British team with Jamie McCanny once again being the fastest of the two McCanny brothers. Danny McCanny just behind them. They finished fourth and sixth respectively out of the juniors and the second E2 junior rider was Danny McCanny. There was a four second gap separating those two. So riding at just almost exactly the same speed. Great Britain pulled another 50 seconds on the Americans. They are represented at the top of the field by Caleb Russell. Once again, he got his head back in the game after an unfortunate penalty yesterday. But he was a little bit slow to start. Only 12th and 20th in the first two stages meant that his overall position suffered a little bit. The young American just needs to get his head in the game right at the beginning. He was followed home by Andrew DeLong, 15th in the juniors just behind a couple of fast riders from Sweden and Diego Ventura from Portugal. But let's hear from one of our fast Frenchmen, Kevin Romo. Uh, the day was good. Uh, Loic and Mathias uh, ride very, very well. Uh, they are very fast and they, we do all the job. Um, the, the, the team is very good and very fast, but Italy is close to, to us and uh, we have to, to stay on our bike. And uh, yeah, maybe when we finish all day as, as today, it can be good at the end of the, of the week. So that is now the French cap. 1 minute 53 over Italy. Great Britain losing a little bit more time today. USA still in fourth and Sweden moving up to fifth. Now let's see from the World Trophy guys. And once again, it was France, helped undoubtedly by Antoine Mio. He is the fastest in Enduro 3 by 4 minutes 50 overall and is looking very, very happy now on that bike. Waving to the camera as he goes past and running so strong all day. There is a big battle at the top of the standings between him and Daniel Milner of Australia. But at the moment, it is Mio who's leading the French team to a good, solid lead. He is followed by Pellerene, his second overall in Giro 2, just ahead of Johnny Aubert. The number 12 having a decent day, but not quite having the pace of the number 10 today. Aubert still trying to find his full-on speed. But the KTM is working well for him. They will see him on a different brand of motorcycle and next year for sure, having signed a three-year deal. Behind them, Jeremy Jolly and Fabian Plane were dropping into the 20th overall. But Jeremy Jolly, the Enduro 1 rider for the French team, is fifth in E1. and shows that the pace of those bikes is still not quite up to scratch. Second now for the USA, Charlie Mullins, the fastest of those riders, the factory KTM rider from America, having a good day today and moving into that position as the fastest American rider. Just behind him, Taylor Robert broke his front brake line early on in the day and in fact rode half the day without a front brake at all, doing everything on the back brake. So great ride from the Kawasaki rider and he fixed that before putting the bike away into Park Ferme. Michael Brown, another strong ride from him. He came home just ahead of Kurt Caselli and all the Americans now racing beyond what they normally do. Most of the AMA races take place over one, maximum two days. Three days is unknown territory for these guys and we'll see how they fare for the rest of the week. Zach Osborne was the final point scoring finish for America after Thad Duval had a crash, swapped ends and lost more time again today. A man not losing time, Daniel Milner. He won overall the day yet again. So he's fastest on day one, fastest on day three. And he is really dragging Australia by the bootstraps, trying to claw their way back up onto the USA. But overall, they were 34 seconds slower than their American rivals. Chris Hollis having a good day. Josh Strang, not so much. They did also lose a little bit of time on the chasing pack, mainly because this man, Husqvarna rider Matthew Phillips, 
finally not making it to the end of the day. He had to pull up just on his way into Park Ferme, and that was it. His six days is over as far as riding concerned, but he is going to help out with the team. One man who thought his six days was over yesterday is back on form, Alex Salvini, despite a small crash just before that finish line, which actually cost him the victory in that first special test, just losing out by six seconds, which was about the time he lost crashing behind that bush. But Alex Salvini is back on form and moving up with Italy having a good day overall. They were 1 minute 20 seconds faster than Salvini and they seem a little bit rejuvenated. Manuel Moni was the second fastest home ahead of Thomas Aldrati who's second in Enduro 1 and Oscar Belletti who was the fourth scoring Italian. Much better day for the Italians and it helped them pull a bit more time on the chasing Spanish. They were in fact second on the day and those gap of two minutes really put them back into contention for an overall podium position. Even Cervantes was the fastest of the Spanish riders once again, Cristobal Guerrero, best Enduro One rider, but still not got the pace overall as the team after the loss of Victor Guerrero. Yeah, this is good for the, for the trophy team. For the French uh, trophy team, we, uh, we are leading. Uh, we make a new job, but uh, for me it was not so so good day. I don't know why, but uh, I find to to find uh, the speed, but uh, it was not possible. So, but I am four, I think overall, and uh, three in uh, E2, and yeah, it's uh, not so bad for for the rest of the, the week. If the French are leading by this gap and they still haven't fully got it together, then the rest of the world best watch out for when they really get their mojo going. France, USA, Australia. That's your standings. That's it for day three of the FIM International Six Days of Enduro. The circus moves to a different set of locations for tomorrow and the podium battle will heat up for both the world and junior trophy teams, especially the Americans who are just cleaning up from the day and prepping for tomorrow. We'll see you then.